Ashley, we've got breaking news. President Trump is speaking right now to reporters at the White House. Actually, this happened moments ago after signing the humanitarian bill. Uh, let's uh, listen in. Fire. So no message to run whatsoever. Any reaction to the protests in Hong Kong today? In Hong Kong, I, I hope it gets solved. I was with President Xi of China. We had a great talk, a great discussion. We're talking about uh, doing something, and we talked about it briefly, but uh, it's very sad. I, I've rarely seen a protest like that. It's very sad to see. Um, will you be delaying the census, Mr. President? Where? Will you be delaying the census? Uh, for the Supreme Court ruling on the census? Yeah, we're looking at that. Uh, we think that a census, obviously, uh, if, if you do all of this work, and you're talking about nobody can believe this, but they spend billions of dollars on the census, and you're not allowed to ask, you don't yes. knock on doors of houses, check houses, you go through all this detail, and you're not allowed to ask whether or not somebody is a citizen. So you can ask other things, but you can't ask whether or not somebody's a citizen. So we are trying to do that. We're looking at that very soon. And why, oh, I'm sorry, if I could follow up. Why do you think it's so important that that question be asked? I think it's very important to find out if somebody's a citizen as opposed to an illegal. I think that there's a big difference to me between being a citizen of the United States and being an illegal. And you know, the Democrats want to treat the illegals with health care and with other things better than they treat the citizens of our country. If you look at a coal miner that has black lung disease, you're talking about people that get treated better than the coal miner. And these people got sick working for the United States, and we treated people that just walked in better. You look at what they're doing in California, how they're treating people. They don't treat their people as well as they treat illegal immigrants. So at what point does it stop? It's crazy what they're doing. It's crazy. And it's mean, and it's very unfair to our citizens. And we're going to stop it. But we may need an election to stop it, and we may need to get back the House. Mr. Yes. President, when will, when will the round of, of trade talks with China begin, after your agreement over It's the already begun. Are they meeting yeah, already? already begun. They're speaking very much on phone, but they're also meeting. Yeah, it's essentially already begun. It actually began before our meeting. But do you know when the, the Lighthizer will sit Whatever down? Whatever it takes. Look, if we don't make a great deal, if we don't make a fair deal, it has to be better for us than for them, because they had such a big advantage for so many years. In other words, you can't make a 50-50 deal when somebody else has been absolutely — I've been talking about this for years. China made — we had a surplus, meaning they did on us, of $507 billion. It's been hundreds of billions of dollars a year for many, many years. So obviously, we can't make a 50-50 deal. It has to be a deal that is somewhat tilted to our advantage. And if we're not going to do that, we're taking in a fortune from tariffs. And unfortunately, we're hurting China by doing that because many of their companies are leaving and going to a non-tariff state so they don't have to pay the tariffs. And the other misconception about China, and I think you read an article today in the Wall Street Journal about it, well, people aren't paying for those tariffs. In that case, certainly, China's paying for them. And those companies are paying for them. China devalued their currency very substantially. And they also put a lot of money into their economy. They're pouring money. It's fake money, but it's money. And they're pouring money into their economy to take care of the tariffs. Our people are — you don't have increased inflation. You have no increased inflation. But I'll tell you what is happening. Our Treasury is taking in billions and billions of dollars of money that normally would be for China. So we'll see what happens. We hope that we can make a deal, but it's got to be a fair deal. We had a deal, as far as I was concerned. And then at the last moment, China decided they didn't like that deal. And they changed it. It's all right. Then I said, you're going to pay 25 percent tariffs on $250 billion. And did President Xi said he would move on some of those issues that were yeah, she, beautiful? Yeah, I expect him to move. And if he doesn't move, that's OK, too. I'm very happy either way. But I think we have a good chance of making a deal. I think they want to make a deal because they're losing many companies that are leaving because of the tariffs, because they don't want to pay the tariffs. So they're losing many companies. They're moving to Vietnam. And by the way, some are moving back to the United States, where they belong. Mr. President, so, do you guys have tanks for Fourth July? Are those entirely off the table now? Well, now they are, because I think the President's doing a great job. He put 16,000 people in this weekend, and uh, they're forming, but they're, you know, getting to the border. They're doing a great job. And he has 6,000 people at the border with Guatemala. So, I mean, it's been way down. It's cut way down. You'll start to see the numbers over the next 
you, three you didn't get it, but you're going to continuously reassess. So, or well, that's true. Absolutely. Take sure. Care. No, no, that's true. But yeah, if they don't do it, but they're doing a good job. Right now, they're doing a very good job. We're very happy with the job they're doing. No, it was because of tariffs that they're doing it. But what, the point is, they're doing a very good job. And he's very smart to do it, because that's a tiny fraction. It sounds like a lot of soldiers, but that's a fraction of what tariffs would cost Mexico. But I very much appreciate it. And he's doing a great job for Mexico, because the Mexican people were very upset with all of these tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people walking through Mexico. And the people of Mexico are just as happy as I am with what they're doing. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it the Border Patrol Facebook group and these derogatory vulgar comments that they've been making about uh, members of Congress? Well, I don't know what they're saying about members of Congress. I know that the Border Patrol is not happy with the Democrats in Congress. I will say the Republicans do want border security. The Democrats want open borders. Open borders means tremendous crime. If you look, there was a report that came out where approximately 600 people in the last caravan were serious criminals. I don't want them in our country. So the Border Patrol, they're patriots, they're great people. They love our country. They know what's coming in. And you know who knows it better than anybody? Hispanics. Hispanics love what I'm doing. Because number one, they don't want to lose their job. They don't want to take a pay cut. And very importantly, most importantly, they don't want to have crime. They understand it. The people that understand the border the best are Hispanics. They understand it better than anybody. And they don't want to have to suffer crime. And they don't want to take a pay cut. They don't want to lose their job. That's why my poll numbers went way up with Hispanics because they really understand the border the best of anybody. Okay. Mr. President, are you going to have tanks out on 4th of July at the Lincoln Memorial for speech? We're going to have a great 4th of July in Washington, D.C. It'll be like no other. It'll be special. And I hope a lot of people come. And it's going to be uh, about this country. And it's a salute to America. And I'm going to be here. I'm going to say a few words. And we're going to have planes going overhead, the best fighter jets in the world, and other planes, too. And we're going to have some tanks stationed outside. Got to be pretty careful with the tanks because the roads have a tendency not to like to carry heavy tanks, so we have to put them in certain areas. But we have the brand new Sherman tanks, so we have the brand new uh, Abram tanks, and we have uh, some incredible equipment, military equipment on display, brand new, and uh, we're very proud of it. You know, we're making a lot of new tanks right now. We're building a lot of new tanks in Lima, Ohio. Uh, a great tank factory that people wanted to close down until I got elected and I stopped it from being closed down. And now it's a very productive facility. They do no, but it's the greatest tank in the world. Do you think that you Abrams. can give a speech that can reach all Americans? All I think so. I think so. I think I've reached most Americans. Most Americans want no crime. Most Americans want a strong military. They want good education. They want good health care. Uh, if you look at pre-existing conditions, the Republicans are going to save pre-existing conditions. The Democrats won't be able to do it. What the Democrats' plan is is going to destroy the country, and it's going to be horrible health care. Horrible health care. And everybody's taxes are going to go to 95 percent. And by the way, that's not enough. But the taxes, if they ever did what they want to do, your taxes go to 95 percent, and that isn't nearly enough. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you right this way. Uh, the United States traditionally supported democracy movements, struggles around the world. Do you have a, a message directly to those Democrats who say they want more democracy and China is not as much? Well, they're looking for democracy, and I think most people want democracy. Uh, unfortunately, some governments don't want democracy, but that's what it's all about. It's all about democracy. There's never been anything better. And I think we're the best example of it right here in the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brad. 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 That was President Trump speaking to reporters after he signed the humanitarian aid bill. He spoke about a wide range of issues, including those Hong Kong pro protests, uh, which took a more violent turn today on the anniversary of the handover back uh, to China. He said that was very sad to see. Uh, he did speak about the China trade deal and how he believes that China needs to make a deal because they're losing a lot of money because businesses are going elsewhere, such as Vietnam, because of those tariffs. He also made the point of saying that the U.S. Treasury is, uh, is uh, bringing in billions of dollars in tariffs that would otherwise go to China. But aside from all that, let's talk about China trade. We were talking about um, Tim Cook moving production 
of the MacBook back to China. And I thought that was a very interesting signal to send ahead of, or around the same time of the G20, but ahead of any sort of deal that was made. Yeah, I, I think it's very clear. I mean, we've seen this time and time again, that the idea of moving to kind of lower cost production places don't really work. Maybe the headline makes some sense, but the idea of moving your entire supply chain that, you know, uh, to Vietnam or, or Mexico or whatever it is, it's just a really hard thing. It's going to take a lot of time. And I think a lot of these announcements have just been really window dressing in, in a time where a lot of these companies have to be very careful in their dance between the U.S. government and, and China, because those relationships are very, very important. It took them decades to make those relationships as far as their supply chains are concerned. So the idea of just kind of letting them go by the wayside doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I, I think companies have to do their due diligence in trying to move their supply chains because they don't want to be caught as reliant on China going forward. So if anything, you're going to see, whether it's incremental at first or whether it takes a year or two or three or four, people are going to move, companies are going to move their production away from China, whether it takes two or four years. I mean, we saw that with Cisco's earnings. He specifically said that over the past six months, they're working out how to move parts of their supply chain outside of China to be not so reliant. And of course, Cisco had a very good quarter with very good guidance. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been so lost on just the trade dynamic and, and really haven't gotten into the details. And we're going to start getting into the details to see the costs on margins for companies to have to rebuild some of this infrastructure. So all great points. Uh, it's a global supply chain. It, it's, it's a global supply chain. So um, if, if, if it's not, you know, if it's the U.S. that's being cut off from China, but no one else is, at some point that will also have an impact for us. Um, there's no question that U.S. companies, as, as Steve and Dan are talking about, have to become more resilient in this environment. And, you know, it, you're seeing that. What I don't think investors have seen is, is the impact on margins yet. And, in fact, I, I don't think they've even come close to seeing it, especially in an environment where you've got a deflation tailwind, and, and that's actually mitigating a lot of these factors. Right. So that truce is a good thing, but the longer this drags on, companies are still in that same position where they're battling these extra costs. Yes. And Correct. margins are compressed. Correct. And the truce is a good thing. But I, I think what, what Trump's really doing right here is, is he's negotiating back and forth right now. And it's in his best interest, if he wants to get reelected next year, to get two or three rate cuts and they have a trade deal done going into 2020. So he's slow playing this whole thing right now. I mean, that's, that's my biggest takeaway from what's happening.